Good morning. We're Hello. live. Hello. We're live. So welcome. Um, welcome. Healing welcome. TV episode 65. How to be healthy and look great during the summer. This is a hot topic. It's May, and we brought on one of our key um, team members, Meredith. Have you seen her in the past? And you know that she's got great wisdom and great recipes, and she lives it. So she knows how to look great, feel great, have more energy during the summer months to do those fun activities, getting that swimsuit um, that, you, uh, that you might not be able to get into right now, but you will in just a few short minutes after we share some great strategies with you this morning. Thanks for joining us. Dr. Pompa, David Asarno, and Meredith Dykstra, let's rock out these top strategies for the summer. All right. Yeah, I, I think uh, Meredith brought up a good point. She said, Dr. Pompa, everybody this time of year starts to worry that they aren't going to look good in their bathing suit. <laughs> they have, you know, it's that time of year. So David's outside, so he's going to get into his bathing suit. We're going to judge him. <laughs> I'm already uh, wearing see. it. <laughs> no, but it is. It is everywhere I've looked. It was about getting ready for summer, right? I mean, it was all all the all the diet things come out. And I can't everything. hear anything right now, so I don't know if what what's happening. All right. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Technical issues. We're having uh, sound issues. That's all right. I'm oh. going to lead it off. Even though I really want ah, that she's going to be able to hear now. You can hear me now, can't you? Yes. Well, it's, yeah, I can. I spoke to one of my patients uh, th this week, and she said, I've been going back and watching all, you know, all the cellular healing TVs, and she says, I, I think about 90% of the time you guys have technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I think you're right. I think you're right. Well, I said, well, Google, Google updates their Hangouts all the time, the technology. Yeah, exactly. It is. Uh, thank you, David. Right. It's not always our fault. They're always changing things, and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to always scramble uh, to keep up. And, and that actually happened today, didn't it? Google's changing some things. That's it. So, can you hear me? Uh, we can. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. All right. <laughs> all right. So I don't know really what I missed, but... Um, you, let's, let's missed rock it out. you missed everything. No, I was oh, saying nice. that how you encouraged me to do this show because you're saying, hey, you know, everyone wants to get ready for summer. And I was like, yeah. I have an idea that after you told me that, literally I saw things everywhere about getting ready for summer and different diets and food. I mean, now everything about looking good in your bathing suit. So mm -hmm. uh, here we are. But, you know, we, we can pull in a lot of great topics that we've talked about in the past. So I don't know if we have someone could – look at some of these episodes, um, get the numbers for people so they don't have to search through because we're going to talk about some topics you know, that we've talked about before and we won't today have time to go into great detail but we have whole shows on these things and you know, many articles. But you know, Meredith, I'll, I'll let you talk about it because you thought these were some great topics and some really important topics to get our viewers ready for summer. Yeah, and it is. It's around the corner, and uh, we kind of have. Um, we thought four different um, kind of past articles are really relevant for um, for just kind of getting your body ready um, to just kind of get lean, um, de bloat, lose that weight, and there's still time. So um, so it's okay. So this is a good time right now to just to to jump in and, and to recommit to um, to just getting to your your best state of health. So um, so we thought, obviously this is kind of a no-brainer, this, this first article, but um, we um, had a while ago talked about the top 10 toxic foods that you should avoid at all times and ideally year-round, all, all of the time that you would be kind of avoiding these foods. But right now, it's, it's particularly pertinent um, for you to just avoid these foods if you want to really start to get lean and, and get your body ready. So, um, so the top ten toxic foods will will link to this article, and um, and it's on Dr. Pompa's website, drpompa.com, drpompa.com. But um, but these kind of toxic foods, and um, I don't know if I need to mention all ten of them, but kind of some of these key ones, I think, are just really key to um to de bloat and lose lose weight. So um, so first toxic food uh, would be grains. So you want to tell us why um. Why that kind of leads to to weight gain and and the issues with grains? I, I think that you know in that subject, you know we've talked a lot about grain, right? I, I think that grain is become more of a popular topic today. Well, hold on, let me back up. It's probably more gluten, right? Mm. So people think it's just gluten. We wrote an article, um, you know, I don't know, uh, so this you know probably past year 
and it was, you know, it's not just gluten, right? And we talked about all the pitfalls of grains. Look, the first argument is this. I don't care what society you're in. I don't care if you believe in low carb, high carb, whatever it is. You know, today, humans as a population, I don't care what type, you know, of genetics you are, humans today eat too many grains. Bottom line, we ingest too many carbs. Even what they would consider a low carb diet in many of the studies is still a high carb diet according to human standards, right? Because I always say that, look, you can't pick one diet for everybody. Some people can do better with higher carbs, higher fat, higher protein. But today, you know, everybody really is consuming higher carbs. But here's the thing, Meredith, everybody looks at the sugar, the sugar, the sugar, and I'm not making an argument for sugar. Sugar is really bad. But the hidden sugar is grains. Grains raise glucose more than sugar and you know that the, I think Bill Davis made it popular that two slices of whole whole grain bread is equivalent to drinking a 12 ounce soda as far as what it does to your glucose look you want to get fat fast eat grains in the summertime people eat far more grains and Meredith probably in the big surprises in the form of chips so, you know, yeah. people eat a lot of the chips and the salsa. So they're eating the cookouts, the barbecues, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, and then quickly, GMOs. You know, we have this surge when they're eating chips of, you know, all the GMO is the genetically modified organisms in the corn. If it's not 100% organic, you're ingesting GMO corn. Massive problems with that. Causes leaky gut, causes massive weight gain because of it, autoimmune, the list goes on. You know, so there is multiple problems with grain. Yes, it's a glucose riser, a super sugar, because of the hybridization in the, you know, 70s, 80s. You know, they hybridize grain, they change grain. It is now what we call a super sugar. That's why it raises glucose more than... Uh-oh. Oh. We lost Dr. Pompa. He'll come back on. All right. I did an experiment, speaking of grains, and, um, and, and the other big important thing about grains, and I, I know a lot about this topic, obviously, you know, and it's, uh, it's a big one. It's the one that saved my life, um, just eliminating those grains. And I talked to a couple gentlemen yesterday, um, and, it, and it's, it's amazing to me, Meredith and David, how people just don't understand how addictive grains are, you know, bread. Um, even whole healthy grains, how addictive it is, the dopamine spike, the insulin and glucose spike, obviously, that leads to, you know, so many weight gain. Like, if I go away, and sometimes if I go away, um, you know, I'll do a diet variation, and I'll eat, you know, healthy bread for a course of four days, possibly. In that four days, I probably gained four pounds of fat, just from eating maybe two pieces of bread, you know, with dinner, and then maybe some, you know, um, non-GMO risotto at a nice restaurant and you know just some more carbs and it's amazing how much fat it puts on me immediately if I ate bread one slice of bread every day I would gain in the next month I would gain at least 10 to 15 pounds so mm -hmm. I, I know well, I think, I think it, but I think it puts your whole body in the whack too I mean, yeah, that's inflammation. Yeah. yeah you're, you're I mean you and I've talked about with if I do the same thing I experience the same thing here's a question I have yeah, you did. You went on a little little thing there, and you gained like 20 pounds again. And then you, well, you 15, but and it melted away. Just like that. Now, here's a question for you. They advertise like, you know, GMO-free, you know, organic bread. Now, organic bread could still be the hybridized wheat, which still causes the problems, correct? Yeah, I mean, typically they use more whole healthy grains, but that's what Dr. Pompa's point was. It doesn't matter what kind of grain, an organic grain, um, you know, some of the more ancient grains, you know, have more fiber and stuff in it. Um, cam kamut, is, is that what it's called, Meredith? Yeah. Mm -hmm. kamut. kamut grain, and then the other one is... Um, Quinoa? It's one out of Italy. Oh, oh yeah. Farro. Farro? Is it Farro? So some of those are better. Um, also, you know, obviously spelt, and the reason those are better, they just have more fiber, more things to knock down that glucose spike, but, oh, there he is, good. So, you know, the organic healthy grains, if you go and get your organic um, gluten-free bread that's potato starch, tapioca sugar, tapioca starch, you're spiking your glucose like crazy, and you're pounding on the fat. 
your body is storing fat in the response to this massive insulin and glucose spike. Mm -hmm. So that, that's very, very key. So your body adapts by storing fat. Mm -hmm. you know? But if you want to get lean for the summer, cut out the grains. Right. Dr. Pump, what you were saying? GMOs. Hi, buddy. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, sleepy. Dr. Pump has got his puppy. He's happy. <laughs> yeah. I, I came up to me. We're at technical difficulties today. Is everyone else on? Yeah. You want to turn your picture off, Dan? Maybe and just do the the the, the uh, I don't know how to do that, but just do your. Oh, audio. My, my signal's strong. I think there's something malfunctioning in my computer. That's computer malfunction. Mm. <laughs> we understand. I had that this morning. Yeah. When in doubt, reboot. Yeah. I, 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 a cat laid on my computer and I think got it wet. So mm. those animals. Um, <laughs> we want more in your house. I know more problems. <laughs> you you cords. Good? Yeah, you're good. Go for it. Well, if you want more problems, have more kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's anti. That's anti scriptural, Doctor Pomp. The, the, the animals, Bible says the animals are easy. They're <laughs> easy comparatively. Yes. So you were talking about GMOs and leaky gut and weight gain and yeah, I mean there's there's multiple problems with grains. Uh, you know that's um, you know that's that's the issue, is that you know there's so many hidden things in the grains. I mean they were hybridized, you know, 70s, you know 60s, 70s, 80s, you know all the way to the 90s. These grains have been hybridized. They've been changed, and now they've become super sugars. So they're glucose risers. That's why they raise glucose more than regular sugar. Um, you know, not to mention the fact that we have GMOs, you know, that started, you know, after the hybridization phase. So, you know, big thing to avoid. So we have a lot to go over, so move on. Yeah, and just in case you're wondering what to do, okay, if you're equated in grains, uh, we just put out an article um, about two weeks ago or so, um, and it's, it's on Dr. Pompa's website, and um, there's just a lot of ideas for, in you know, great meals that don't incorporate grains. So, for example, instead of that hamburger with a hamburger bun at a picnic, you could do a lettuce wrap. Um, instead of, like, a little pizza for dinner, um, you can do a portobello mushroom on, as a crust. And, um, and I made a great um, pizza last night, too, without any grain in it. So I'll be putting that recipe out on the website. Um, we'll try to get that out today, too, for you. Was, your, was, your, was it cauliflower, or was it, like, coconut? or? No, I used uh, coconut flour and arrowroot starch. Oh, good. Crust, and it was awesome. Uh, kind of more of a flatbread. But, yeah, so we'll get that out for you. Um, another you that article, Meredith, because that's a, it is a powerful article. Um, and it's uh, Eat Fat, Lose Fat, Meal Ideas and Recipes. So, and yeah, that's on, that's on the website. Uh, so some other toxic things you need to avoid uh, to lose weight, uh, vegetable oil is a big one. So you want to talk about that, Dr. Pompa? Yeah, you know, as we mentioned that everyone's ingesting all the chips and, you know, crackers and these things that we eat at barbecues um, and just generally in the summer, they're loaded with vegetable oil. Vegetable oil drives cellular inflammation. Look, cellular inflammation is the cause of hormone resistance, insulin, leptin, I mean, every hormone involved in weight loss, thyroid hormone. So, you know, the, the problem today isn't about, you know, lacking hormones as much as it is the cell not hearing the hormones because it's inflamed. Well, vegetable oil is one of the big drivers, you know, of this problem. So avoid it like the plague, and it's hidden in the forms of canola oil and many other things. So know what you're eating, read the ingredients. Yeah, soybean oil, and, and it's true, and so many restaurant meals and restaurants do use those toxic vegetable oils, so really important to avoid those. And um, I want to make a point on oils and fats, because this always goes through my head. You know, folks, you know, think fried foods are bad, so fat is bad, right? So they think it's the fat in the fried foods that they're avoiding, because people avoid, I just got rid of fried foods and I lost weight. Well, it's not because it was the fat in the oil, it was because of the denatured canola vegetable oil blend that they're cooking it in that's so stinking denatured and so toxic to your cells that your body can't hear, you know, takes whatever, 300 and almost a year to get rid of it all um, on the cell membrane, causing cellular inflammation, causing hormone receptor, you know, and hormone issues so that you can't burn fat for energy, so that you can't metabolize fat. Um, your hormones can't hear correctly, that your insulin can't get into the cell to let sugar in. 
um, that opening um, lock like a key to let sugar in. I mean, it's that's the issue. So we think it's the fat, but really it's not the fat. If you eat fat, you lose weight, but if you eat bad fats, fried foods that have denatured fats, that's the culprit, just like Dr. Pompa said. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it's so true. And but good fats are so key to weight loss. Another 180 degree solution. So coconut oil is a great thing to use. I fry a lot of my foods in coconut oil. Um, grass fed butter is awesome as well. Uh, MCT oil, uh, which we have here in our store, is one of my favorite things for fat burning. Um, MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides, and they're the type of fatty acids that um, compose about 60% of coconut oil. Um, but when you ingest uh, this MCT oil, which is clear and has no flavor. It's, it's just really easy. You can mix it you know, right into your, your coffee or tea in the morning. Um, it goes right into the liver, gets really quickly metabolized so it's not stored as fat. And, um, and it also helps your liver to produce ketone bodies, which are the preferred source of fuel for your brain. It's, it's just awesome stuff and, um, and it's really, really amazing for fat burning. So just a really good fat to keep in mind to, um, to help with, with accelerating weight loss. Yeah, Mary, you sound like Dr. Pompa. Holy cow! Look at oh. you. Ketones, you're you're getting you're throwing stuff out there that I forgot. Oh, um, just trying to learn. You're, it's amazing. You're not trying. You are. You know, you're living yeah. it, sister. And that's no. how you learn it. It's one of the food. things, um, and we have other topics we have to move into. But you know, one of the hidden dangers in the summer, and this this is probably the most toxic of all the things that we talked about. Grilling. When you grill oh, outside one. grills. It's the HCAs that uh, these things, what is it, heterocyclic amines. It's the charring that happens on the meat. So when you put your burger and your chicken on the grill, look, there, there's more studies actually showing that the cancer-causing properties of that. I mean, it's ridiculously high. I mean, you might as well just eat heavy metals. You might as well just eat other things because those things are actually more toxic. So people don't realize when you're eating that burnt stuff from a grill, even the smoke that comes from the grill because of the charring on the grill goes into the food and that's the flavor that people like but it's cancer causing it's extremely toxic it costs your body days of upregulating glutathione and detox pathways just to get rid of that stuff so y'all know I don't eat food from a grill you know it's something I just don't do you know because of the multiple things that I've read about the dangers of that stay away from it you know cook it on the inside have fun outside. Yeah. Yeah, one other thing, the fat thing I, I wanted to, before we wrap that up, there's a really important, um, two important points I want to make that move into the summer months and just show you the, the importance of eating healthy fats. Um, there's a company called Skinny Coconut Oil. The reason they named it Skinny, we carry it on revelationhealth.com. The reason they call it Skinny, and it got on Oprah or something, so they even raised their prices a little bit, but is that people are eating it and they're actually getting skinny. Um, because of it upregulating your metabolism, because they're getting the healthy fats. And the other benefit for you, for all of us, you know, I'm in my, you know, I'm early 40s, I'm 40 years old. Of course, brain function is so important. And there's studies on coconut oil, MCT oil for brain function. Um, we had Ruth here last night, Dr. Pomp, and she's like, oh my gosh, I've been just doing that coconut oil. She's lost like, I don't know, like a 75 pounds, you know, and she was, she couldn't walk. She had joint pains before she started eating the cellular healing diet. She was just telling her story that, she was so sick before she met you, Dr. Pompa, and, but that coconut oil, she talks about brain function and not having brain fog is really key. You know why that is? Because it's medium chain triglyceride, and it, it burns, it causes a fat burning, okay, because the body literally, you know, wants to burn fat when you take in these medium chain triglycerides. The byproduct of fat metabolism is something called ketones ketones the brain loves. It heals the brain, which when we talk about diet variation, we put people oftentimes in keto adaptation where we get their cells to be a fat burner and not use sugar. And therefore they make more of these ketones which has a healing effect on the brain. And it's an instant effect. People notice the difference right away when they eat those types of fat burning fats. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the last fat point that I think is really key and Dr. Pompa, you taught me this and man the difference it makes. I'm really fair skin. I burn really easily or at least I used to and it's amazing. I, I was at like five hours on a boat and got cooked because I was being dumb and most people would have you know been in the hospital for, I mean you can see how white I am. I'm as white as white can get. You know I'm almost a redhead white um, but I'm a very light skin 
northern Italian gene or something going on here, but I, I don't have um, the ability. I burn really easily. So these high fats, when you're out sunbathing, Dr. Pompa, tell them how important that is to the cells not, not getting age spots, obviously, and then also not burning as easily. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really easy thing to use, coconut oil or shea butter, uh, you know, both really amazing fats that have a natural blocking um, of the sun. You know, and, and you know the big misconception. And I don't want to get too caught, far off track here, but you know, sun sunblock that you buy in the store. You know, does it keep you from burning? Yes, but the problem is, is it allows the it blocks the UVB rays. That's the ones that burn you. But the ones that actually cause cancer are the UVA rays, and it doesn't block those. So people stay out longer with sunscreen on, and they're actually increasing the damage, um, and obviously the you know the dangers of cancer because they're getting more of the UVA rays. And again, I believe, just like in nature, there's a balance. You know, the UVB rays are there to let us look at ourselves and realize, okay, we need to move out of the sun. You know, I mean, so together the UVA and the UVB make up a perfect balance. And you get that balance when you utilize the natural oils, whereas when you use synthetics, you don't get the balance. You're getting more of the UVA. So I believe there's greater danger for you know, sun cancer or uh, skin cancer and other damage when you actually utilize those. And again, that's not my opinion. There's many studies on the dangers of sunscreen from a chemical standpoint and because it only blocks one of the rays. So good thing for summer. Go ahead, Meredith. Take us to the next subject. All right. Uh, yeah, a couple more um, just toxic foods to avoid. Then we'll move on to, uh, to something else. But um, so in avoiding conventional meats and dairy, uh, really, really important um, over the summer too to, to help you lose weight. So, and and what's what's the problem with those conventional meat and dairy products? Well, they're they're loaded with grains. So now we bring up our grain topic, right? Conventional meat is grain fed, you know, all the wrong fats, all the wrong ratios. And again, the list goes on. Toxic meat, toxins are the number one cause, you know, of cellular inflammation, and therefore weight gain. So yeah. when we say cellular inflammation, we're talking hormone resistance, we're talking not just weight gain, but a drop in energy, you know, don't feel well, and really the true cause of most diseases is in yeah. fact inflammation. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, a, a big reason to avoid those toxic meats, and they are loaded with chemicals uh, from steroids, hormones, but the hidden danger is the fact that they're grain fed, they're not meant to eat grain, and that's a big problem. And you hear that all the time, Dan. Um, I was talking to someone the other day. They're like, oh, you know, I, I, I know who it was, but, you know, it was from, I think you know who it was now, but it was at um, where we were just at a little bit ago, and some, one, of the, one of the leaders there said, oh, yeah, I, I got my mom to study, uh, stop eating dairy, and she lost 15 pounds, 20 pounds, just like I did. We stopped eating dairy, um, and then we lost all this weight. Now, the reason they lost weight, why we're telling you to avoid toxic dairy you know, non-grass-fed dairies because, yeah, the, the conventional dairy that Dr. Pump, Dr. Pump is talking to you about, it's not like a vegan diet or whatever, get off of all, you know, animal products. If you eat raw grass-fed cheeses and dairy and, and grass-fed meat, you actually lose weight, you know, the research would show. But if you're eating the toxic conventional dairy, you actually gain weight. So when they removed that from their diet, got her mom to remove that, she lost weight because, again, the cause of weight loss resistance is inflammation and hormone dysregulation. So I want to make that important point. We can't drive that home enough. Removing dairy from your diet is a bad idea. Removing toxic conventional dairy from your diet is a great idea. It's one of the most toxic foods because of what they do to the animals multiple ways and it comes through in the meat. But real dairy, I mean, every healthy culture on the planet ingests it. Um, but again, you have to find the real deal. So. Mm -hmm. Important. That's important key. All right. So review. So toxic foods. So to really to lose weight, you want to drop the grains, get rid of the conventional and toxic vegetable oils, um, drop the refined sugar, which kind of goes along with the grains as well, and uh, and switch from conventional meats and dairy to grass-fed, pastured, cultured, really healthy sources of, of animal products. So awesome. And um, all right. So some toxic foods to avoid. But what's next? Uh, let's let's give you a little incentive real fast because I, we just said that, and most people are like, yeah, I can't do that because I'm addicted to sugar. But you can expect, like in, in some people, if you're overweight, you may, if you start eating this way and getting rid of that, those things, not that losing weight is, means health, not that losing weight is 
you know, calorie restriction, whenever to lose weight. I'm not saying that, but you could lose up to a pound a day when you do that, especially if you're toxic and eating a lot of these toxic things. Your body will respond and be very happy. So trying to incentivize you guys. If you do this stuff, you can lose a lot of weight in that first month and be ready for the July summer months coming up. Yeah, it can be very dramatic, and you feel so much better, and your brain starts to work better, and it's such a win-win. So, but you gotta, you gotta jump in and make the commitment. Future so, pace, come on. Yep, you can do it. All right. So next to another, um, just really relevant topic and trick, I think that uh, really makes sense. So you're kind of, so if you kind of implement some of these diet strategies, um, and maybe you're not seeing quite the results you'd like to see, um, Dr. Pompa has a little trick, and it's called diet variation. So you want to tell us about that, Dr. Pompa? Yeah, I mean, you know, diet variation, I believe, this is what's something that humans are just meant to do. Um, you know, in the our ancestors, they had to diet vary because they had to, meaning things changed. They didn't have certain foods at certain times, whether it was from the weather uh, or whether it was just from scarcity. But diet variation, we know, works for people who can't lose weight and weight loss resistance. So what do we mean by that? Meaning that, you know, look, there's a lot of talk about, you know, lowering carbs to the point of keto adaptation. We love that, right? There's major benefits. I put people in and out of keto adaptation, um, which I call an advanced cellular healing diet, because it heals the brain. It heals other things. I mean, major benefits occur during times of ketosis. But here's what happens. The body goes through an adaptation, survival, when you switch from diet to diet, meaning that you start to now raise your carbohydrate intake to healthy carbohydrates, but a higher level of them, you know, just like what happened, you know, in the old days. So winter would come, it would force people to eat mostly meats and fats because they could store those, they had the animals, they didn't have the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. When uh, spring comes, and now they're so sick of the meats and the fats, now they switch to a higher carbohydrate diet. And, you know, again, higher, you know, in their terms is not higher today. But that variation would actually do some amazing things in the body. The body's hormones would shift in this adaptation, and we would see this amazing shift occur where people would become lean again, even on a higher carbohydrate diet. I just, you know, I discovered this really by accident. Putting people into keto adaptation, some people wouldn't go in. They wouldn't become these efficient fat burners. And again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a, two articles on keto adaptation. Read them. But people wouldn't go into this fat burning stage. And I would, after four months of them being very strict, lowering their carbs under 50, even under 20 or 30, or 30 or 20, they still would not go in. And then we would, I said, okay, let's bring them back to a regular cellular healing diet, which is a little higher in healthy carbs. And now all of a sudden they would lose 5, 10 pounds where they weren't able to when they first started that diet months ago. So all of a sudden it would stop at that 5 or 10 pounds. So another 3 or 4 months, I said, now let's go back into ketosis. And lo and behold, they would go into ketosis and they would break right in like there was no problem and they would lose weight in that diet. So I, I learned to vary the diet, utilizing this adaptation that our bodies are set up to do to change diets. Hormones go up in these states, evidently, and that is a key, a trick to losing weight. Vary your diet. <clears throat> I believe it's adaptation. I believe it's all about hormone manipulation. But all I know is this. There's very little in the scientific literature about this. But my belief is, is it's, it is hormone manipulation. It is about survival. And what the body does in times of plenty, in times of you know, starvation, and it moves the hormones. And I said it a zillion times. The key to weight loss is more about hormones than even what you eat. Diet variation has proved my point. Uh, and really, I, you know, I, I think that it's deserving that one day I will write a book just about diet variation. That's how well it works. So right now, I'm back into ketosis. Through most of the winter, I went higher healthy carbs. I raised my carbs up to about 150 healthy carbs a day, which, by the way, was actually a little harder for me than even when I'm in ketosis. Now I'm under 50 carbs a day, back into ketosis. And, you know, so that benefit um, is, is really neat to see. So that's diet variation, and we did write an article on that, Meredith. 
Yep, and check it out, and, and it works. It, it's just such an awesome trick, so try it for yourself. I had one other thing I want to add to that because, you know, and I've seen this in your clients over and over again. Remember, in the clinic, um, the diet variation also goes with the food allergy thing because if you have a food allergy, say you're eating corn chips all the time, and we've had clients like this, eating corn chips every day, every day, they've tried every diet on the planet, and they still can't lose weight. They cut out the corn chips, and all of a sudden, the weight starts blowing off of them even, you know, in the cellular healing diet program. So what happens is if with leaky gut, glyphosate, all, a lot of us have leaky gut. I still have a little bit of a leaky gut, and I've been at this a long time. It, it takes a long time to heal, man. It takes seven years for your cells to turn over in your body. So it is a process of doing the right things over and over again, day by day, step by step, and you get there. But... You know, the, the food allergies from a leaky gut causes what, Dr. Pompa? Inflammation. And that inflammation causes hormone dysregulation so you can't lose weight. So diet variation and switching the foods that you're eating and the types of foods that you're eating um, kind of goes along with a little bit different concept, but don't eat the same dang foods every day. No, you know, can't lose weight. Go ahead, Dan. When you look at most of those allergy tests, people are allergic to the foods they eat all the time. You know, there's a danger in people who just eat the same food day in, day out, the same diet year after year. I believe it's unhealthy. You need to vary your diet. You know, it really makes a difference. It really does. I mean, there's seasons. It's seasonal. Things grow. Now, there's a danger today because we can get fruit in the winter. In the old days, you couldn't do that. I mean, there was just certain times that certain things grew. You know, so diet variation is how our human bodies are set up. In Meredith, we see, you know, in, we talked about this in the article. Even when we have someone in ketosis, keto adaptation, one day a week doing a high carb day, that diet variation kicks weight loss in like crazy. I mean, you know, two days after I do a high carb day when I'm in ketosis, two days later, I mean, I am leaner, visibly, vascular. The difference is crazy. Why? Because I told my body it's not starving. I told my body it has plenty. And what happens? Hormones adjust. The body burns fat. You know, when you stay in ketosis without any higher carb days, the body starts to get nervous. The body wants to hold on to fat because it knows it's only it's it's, it's only energy source is fat when you're in ketosis. You know, so it wants to hold on to it, and it does very clever things to survive. It will make it will blunt some insulin receptors. It will plug fat cells with water. So here, someone is in this only burning fat mode of ketosis, and yet they kind of start gaining a little weight around their waist. Why is that? Survival. It's about hormones. How do you beat it? Vary the diet. Want high, you know, carb days once a week, even a whole day of fasting once a week. That's variation. It works. It works every time. Read the article. It's a really, really good article. Yeah, and the variation principle is the same with exercise as well. If you're exercising in the same way all the time, are you going to get results? No, you're, they're going to stop. So you want to talk about why that happens? Yeah, I mean, again, it's the stress rest. Uh, you know, philosophy. In other words, when you're doing the same exercise day in, day out, or every time you exercise, it, it really doesn't bring much stress, a healthy stress to the body. Remember, how you get stronger is adapt to stress, right? I mean, athletes know that they really make their progress when they're resting, not when they're exercising. But if you don't stress the body enough, then there's nothing to adapt to. It doesn't get stronger. When you vary the exercise, it, the body has to adapt, change, adapt, change. The same is happening with the diet. The body has to change, adapt, and it does it with hormones. Same with exercise. After you do a new workout and it's a stress, the body raises up growth hormone, testosterone. The key is variation. Mm -hmm. And this perfectly leads into our next uh, trick for weight loss is uh, fasting and burst training. So I want to tell, uh, tell our viewers how that works to really accelerate weight loss. I already opened it up by saying that the, the trick to really being lean and you know breaking weight loss resistance is hormones, right? Well, a trick is when you exercise on an empty stomach, again, it's all about survival and hormone adaptation. The body goes, uh-oh, we are, we are lacking energy. You're burning up your stored sugar, your glycogen, right? And what happens is it raises up its growth hormone to hold on to the muscle and therefore it goes into this major fat burning mode. So exercising on an empty stomach is actually magic to raise growth hormone, anabolic hormones, to kick your body into fat burning, not just for that moment, but for 36 hours. 
And that's really the magic of burst training. High intensity training burns the sugar, not the fat. And then your body has to, you know, replace that stored sugar. Why? It's about survival. It knows it needs it in fight or flight. So to do that, it raises up growth hormone and anabolic hormones to, to become an efficient fat burner to replace it. It burns the fat. It doesn't want to burn the muscle to replace the, 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 the stored sugar that it needs to survive. So it's hormone manipulation, exercise on empty stomach. So I intermittent fast daily. I don't eat breakfast. So I eat dinner. I fast all through the night. I fast through the morning. And I love to exercise. I've been too busy lately to do this. So I'm, I'm off my game. But I love exercising, uh, you know, sometime in the morning on that empty stomach. You get the growth hormone spike, and it really makes a difference for people who struggle to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really does. Doing it on a fasted stomach, it, uh, it makes it better already for the summer just listening to you guys. There's, a, there's an article that I wrote, and I talked about, it wasn't, it, it talked about skinning, right? And there's me at the top of the mountain. Uh, with my We're going to link to that, yeah. Exactly. We'll link to that article. And I, I talked about that principle. So try it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. And it goes against all the conventional wisdom, too, of eating, you know, before you exercise, eating after you exercise. It's 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 totally a different concept. but it's 180. Um, 180 yeah, concept. It, it's a 180 concept, and, uh, and it really works. So, um, yeah, so we're going to link to the article, and um, you can kind of read a little bit more about that if it's your first time watching, like, what are you talking about, intermittent fasting and first training? Well, you know, we're going to kind of break it down a little bit more, and you can kind of link to those, all right, we'll link to those articles that, as well. Is that so. going out in an email, Mer Meredith? It will be going out in an email. I think we're shooting to, um, to get out either today or tomorrow, and we're going to have these four articles we're referring to, so the top ten toxic foods to avoid, um, diet variation, um, fasting and burst training and how that you know really affects your your brain and your body for weight loss for increased brain function and then this last kind of little article we're going to link to is um, top 10 travel tips to uh, to stay healthy while you're on the road hey, so, well, okay. how do they some of our viewers don't aren't on our email list how do they get on our email list Meredith oh, good point yeah that's that is great um well you can email me, uh, Meredith, M E R E. No, I wouldn't do that. To Dr. I'm not sure. Yeah, actually. Let's go to our website. Go to our website, all right. I was, I was testing you, Meredith. You're so yeah, sweet. I failed. I failed the test. That is so sweet of you. You're a good customer service. That's why you, you know, you're, you're such a um, team player. But, I mean, you could write Meredith if, if you want to read it on her. That's fine. Um, but go to our website, drpompa.com, and there's multiple ways to opt in. Um, the ones that, that I love is just that you get a free ebook, and so find that little link on our website, um, and it's right there on the on the sidebar, and then you, like on the right side of the, of the website, you click on that, put in your email, and then if you put your email in right now, um, you'll be getting our emails immediately right after that so you can catch this next article. Yeah. Yeah, be on the lookout. We call Meredith our little action hero. Kind of give, give her one of these for us, man. Let, let's just see what you got there. Look at that, look at that girl. She is ripped. <laughs> uh, well, I haven't even been exercising, too. I know, like you said, um, I haven't first trained for a good while. But when you change your diet and um, and you just you really make the commitment, you don't need to exercise as much as you know you think you need to um, to maintain a lean body because because the diet is it seems what 70, 80 percent of of your physique is just really determined by what you eat and and yes the exercise is so important fasting and burst training and um, and even some endurance work is, is really important as well but um but so much of, of how you look is just predicted by what you eat. So it's. I know we say the same thing all the time, but people need to hear it. Yeah, it's a process, day by day, man. Yeah, yeah. Meredith's right. I mean, it's people think that uh, the lack of exercise is why they're fat. Uh, uh, zero exercise is the cherry on the top. Exercise, we love it. Good for many things. However, the key to weight loss is hormones and more diet than it is exercise. I, I told this is a good story. I think it'll add some value to those watching, just to kind of break out of their mindset a bit. I talked to two very overweight fellas um, the other day, and I'm like, "Why do you think?" I asked them, "Why is running, you know, if you thought you're going to lose weight, what would you think of doing? Exercising more, going out for a run, you know, that's how you lose weight. That's how you're healthy." And again, and the reason why folks my age, a little bit younger, all the way into your 60s. 
they were taught through TV, through aerobics, through you know burning exercise with what's his name? Um, Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons. Richard S Simmons. <laughs> Um, all this stuff, they really believe that it's, you know, and then the weightlifting movement, you know, um, eating just high protein, you know, and um, rice and, you know, and then just burning tons of calories. And that's how we were raised. We were raised to believe that. So you have a culture code, they call it, and the America still markets to you that way. You know, Nike does. All these people, they, they market to you. You go out and buy a pair of running shoes and you're going to lose weight. You're going to look better. You're going to be great. That's in your mindset. You've been brainwashed to believe that. So I'm telling you this right now. We are telling you this right now on Cellular Healing TV, and you're going, ah, it's not true. And how I know that is I've talked to my brother, my family members, people who believe this brainwashing that you've gotten over the last 20 years that exercise and running equals weight loss. It's a culture code. Rocky, Rocky 1 through Rocky 5 through Rocky 7 has taught you that. You know, it's wrong. It's bad science. It's not even science at all, and it's still being taught, and we're drinking that Kool-Aid. So stop drinking that Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid does make you gain weight because it's sugar. So you want to stop drinking that, and you want to stop believing what you were taught over those 20 years. Actually, Rocky actually also started people drinking raw eggs. So, um, you know, good point. You're better There's off the positive there, though. Yeah. You're better off drinking the raw eggs. Yeah. So we'll give Rocky a, a, some kudos, um, but, you know, I would, uh, if you drink too many raw eggs, you can actually have a biotin deficiency. Just saying. But anyway, so those are 180 concepts, man. We always say it. But okay, with sake of time here, we have uh, a few minutes left to hit some of these travel tips, you know, Meredith. And, uh, you know, there's nobody that travels more than me, and I don't go off my plan, right? I mean, how is it possible? And I hear it all the time when people go on vacation in the summer, their diet falls apart. They come back thinking they're going to get back on it, but now all their cravings are back, and you know they fall off, and it happens all the time. So what do you do, Meredith? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and what do you do? Because I think, yeah, we do kind of the same thing. You you stay prepared. You know, you're prepared. Um, I never go on a trip if I, especially on a flight, if I don't have healthy snacks. You know, and healthy fat as well. Sometimes, um, last time when we were just in Atlanta for the last seminar, I took a little jar of coconut butter, and I just had that straight up. Sometimes I like to mix a little sea salt with it, but I keep it in my purse. Um, so if I, you know, am hungry or I feel like my blood sugar is dipping a little bit, I just have a couple spoonfuls of coconut butter, and it really helps me feel good, helps me turn my brain back on, and give me energy until we, we get to the next meal or, or till the next, you know, time when I can actually have a real meal. Um, so that's a little trick that I use. So what are some things that you uh, kind of take with you uh, as you travel? And what, when you're fasting as well, you don't, and you're kind of in that ketotic fat-burning zone, you can go for much longer periods without eating, and your blood sugar remains stable, and you don't need to eat as much or feel victim to airport food. Um, yeah, exactly. I can, <clears throat> I can travel, uh, you know, and I usually use that as a fasting day. I just, I don't eat. You know, I can go hours and hours without eating, and, my body just bur burns the fat, so it keeps my blood sugar very level. That's the key to anti-aging. Keep your glucose and insulin level. That's key. Uh, and you're right. That you Being an efficient fat burner, that's a hormonal thing. That's the key to that. But what do I do? So, I mean, first of all, today it's so easy. Every city I go in, you can find healthy restaurants. You know, look, when in doubt, you know, meat and vegetables, nix the bread, in almost every restaurant today, I mean, they're having grass-fed, you know, things. Right? Like Carl Jr. has grass-fed burgers, for goodness sakes. 100% grass-fed, that's what they're saying. I haven't looked into it, you know, enough to know is that true or not. But they advertise 100% grass-fed. I mean, Carl Jr.'s, I mean, this is a fast food restaurant. So, I mean, this is, it's easy to do. Most lamb on the menu, let's say they don't have grass-fed. Lamb is, you know, grass-fed. So, you know, there's so many things. You could do a chicken salad. I mean, look, there's a thousand things to do, you know, when you're traveling to not break the diet. You know, mm -hmm. and I think in the article you gave some other tips. So, you know, yeah. some, I mean, traveling with stuff is key. I mean, that's, you know, you can always bring your foods in case you get trapped. I bring my powders, you know, my whey, my whey proteins, things like that. But it's so easy to eat healthy today. Yeah, there's really no excuses anymore. So uh, if you keep your healthy snacks with you, you can make good choices at restaurants, sticking to protein, vegetables, and good fat. 
And um, and there's really no excuse. So. Yeah, I have a little daughter, and you know, and we always have to bring snacks. So we're always bringing um, blocks of raw, organic, um, grass-fed cheese. You know, we bring that block with us and leave it in there. We bring um, Mary gone, Mary's Gone Crackers, which is a grainless cracker, um, you know, made of seeds. And then we take nuts and seeds. And between mm -hmm. those those things, you know, we could feed ourselves for half the day. You know, I feed all three of us on a block of cheese. Um, various nuts, cashews, almonds, walnuts, um, and there's others, pecans, you know, obviously all organic, sprouted is better because it's not hard, it's hard to digest on your stomach, doesn't bloat you, so if you're bloated by nuts, get the sprouted um, versions and you'll notice a massive difference there, but that's what we do when we travel with the family. Here's the I like the epic bars too, those, the, the meat bars from bison, grass-fed beef and lamb, those are a nice snack option as well. The, the, the mistake most people make in restaurants, it, it's the oils, right? It's, you know, if you hear us, we ask these questions, you know. We ask, you know, what, what's the, the dressing? Can we have olive oil on the side, right? Because dressings are a disaster. I mean, that's where you're going to get all your hidden sugars, artificial sugars, sweeteners, colorings, bad fats, vegetable oils. It's all in the, you know, it's all in there. So, you know, if you have olive oil, oh, yes, they bring out the olive oil. That's what we do, right? Yeah. So, you know, leave that stuff off. You know, and uh, you know, then you're gonna at least look. You may not be able to get organic lettuce, you know, but you eat 100% organic at home. When you're on the road, do the best you can. But listen, again, yeah. today it's easier and easier to get organic. It's easier and easier to get grass-fed meat. So gonna, not hard at all. I'm gonna but, show you guys a tip. Look what we do, and everyone likes to know what Warren and Dr. Pompa does. But if you want to see how we store all of our nuts and seeds, you can see that we have almonds, walnuts, raisins, dates. I mean, those are sugar, but you can eat those sparingly. Those are more for my daughter or for baking. Cash, organic cashews, organic raw uh, pumpkin seeds, raw sunflower seeds, more pumpkin seeds, organic popcorn, pecans, Brazil nuts, chia seeds, cherries, quinoa, there's some other things, pinto beans, you know, lentils, and we don't eat a lot of that stuff. But right there you have, like, diet variation, a whole bunch of different seeds, different B vitamins, all kinds of goodness, and that's just one drawer in my house. So I thought that that would inspire some of you to run out there and buy some mason jars and kill it. Nice. Supplement, Kevin. No, we're and not going to get into that today. That would be a long, 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 I have a quick little question. Today, though. I have a little question for you, Dr. Pomba, too. Sometimes while traveling, this is kind of relevant, um, if I have a, a meal that I don't feel, you know, was, was healthy and I, I knew that there were some, you know, not so good ingredients in it, um, sometimes I take um, the Bind product we have, which contains the super activated carbon charcoal, to attach to those toxins that I've ingested to help them move out of my body a little more quickly. And what do you think of that trick? No, in fact, we do it too. We, yeah. all, all of us right here, we don't travel without Bind, you know. Yeah. And, I t and I take more G-cell too, you know, just yeah. to keep my glutathione levels up. When I travel on airplanes, of course, G-cell is very important. Also, I take TMI, um, iodine, because you want to mitigate some of the radiation that you get from flying and traveling. And that's oftentimes what makes people really feel bad and wiped out. It's just the radiation amounts. You know, the body's not, you know, used to it. So people say, what about flight attendants? Well, they actually raise up. They adapt to the radiation. You know, people that live at elevation get more radiation, but we adapt. You know, so... Um, you know, there is a protective mechanism, but when you're not doing it all the time, you're not adapted. So your body has to take the radiation hit, and that's one way to mitigate some of that. So what I, what I do, just as a, um, before I get on a plane, I take two TMI, um, I'll put two mores, two um, rocks, antioxidants, uh, again, sometimes G-cell as well, and I stick those in my pocket, and before um, I get on go through security and sometimes I, I you know take them through security but a lot of the times before I get on in security I pop all those and then I'm, I'm good for the flight and then I have some of those with me for the flight home just to protect myself when I'm flying because there are some you know more challenged folks that are out there that are traveling and they travel on it. and Dan you know with me I, I get so sick when I would travel and I do that now and I know I'm doing everything I can for myself I'm raising up my methylation I'm raising up my glutathione levels you know taking those specific antioxidants, um, just to knock down the oxidative stress of travel and the stress of getting ready to travel, as you know, packing bags can be one of the most stressful things you can do. 
um, to your health. It's that, that's important. one of the most stressful things Warren does because he's a <laughs> I throw it in the bag. It takes me 20 minutes. I don't even. I stress. <laughs> and my wife packs most of it. The ASEA yeah. is really good because oh, yeah, yeah. redox molecules, they come in travel packs. So you'll see those in my bag all the time. Yeah. The redox molecules you need to make glutathione work. You need redox molecules for cell-to-cell -cell communication. So, you know, redox really is the reduction and oxidation. You need the oxidation part to keep your immune system up. You need the reduction to reduce the inflammation. Uh, ASEA brings that perfect balance. And a lot, many people have normal glutathione levels, but they really don't get the benefit of it because they don't, they're lacking in redox molecules. So, um, it's a product that I travel with everywhere I go, and it's yeah, it's magic. Product, it really yeah. is. It's it's yeah. a it's an incredible product. We love it. I always say it's the only product that really covers all five R's. You know, of cellular healing and detox. So an amazing product. If you went down to my kitchen, you'd see it down there. My kids take it. We take it. Most athletes, you know, love it, and that's why I take it even for athletic performance. So. Another great tip. So I think we're out of time. It's an amazing product. And you can learn more about that product on drpompa.com, too, if you're wondering what ASEA is. So, um, yeah, so we're going to send out this email. It's going to talk about the toxic foods to avoid and diet variation, how to incorporate fasting and bursting to lose weight, and then some healthy travel tips. So be on the lookout for that. All right. Thank you, Meredith. All That's right. Great. Thank you, Meredith. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a great weekend. Kill it. Bye. Get healthy. All right. Blessings. Bye.